Today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to help you decide whether Hell Let Loose is the right World War II shooter for you, as it is my firm belief that the game is built for strategy gamers just as much as FPS gamers. By the end of this video, you will know what it's like to actually play this game to help you make an informed decision. I'm not a Hell Let Loose fanboy, although I have played for some 40 hours, I just took a chance on this game so I could report back with my findings to you, my fellow generals. First, give me 45 seconds to describe the game in a nutshell. If you're still intrigued after that, we'll go into more detail about how the game plays, the mechanics, and I'll justify why I believe this game is perfect for strategy fans. Hell Let Loose is a brutally realistic first-person shooter set in World War II. You can play as the Germans, Americans, and Russians with the British promised in the future. Currently, it's a 50 vs 50 online multiplayer game with a genuine emphasis on teamwork and far more depth than simply running and shooting until you die. Engineering and the movement of supplies are just two examples of essential and rewarding activities undertaken behind the front line on huge maps, leading to coordination and strategic depth simply not present in most shooters. One shot is often all it takes to bring you down, encouraging cautious gameplay making use of cover, and basically realistic combined arms warfare. It also means far less emphasis on being able to shoot someone in the head while jumping around like a twat. Patience, teamwork, and knowing when to take a shot are far more effective and deadly tools in Hell Let Loose. The game is uncompromising in that it forces you to join a squad before you play, and the mostly friendly community almost insist on using a mic to communicate with your squad mates, which is easily one of the best, if not slightly intimidating, parts of the game. After a successful Kickstarter campaign, the game was in early access for a couple of years before being formally released in July 2021, and has received very positive reviews. To this day, the game has incredibly healthy player numbers, has seen its release on console, and a detailed roadmap has already delivered much free content and promises to deliver even more. If you're still interested, let's take a more detailed look at what you actually do in Hell Let Loose to see if it's right for you today. To explain the big picture, we'll start with the map. It's split into five combat areas. Each of those is made up of three sectors, and each of those sectors is made up of four grid squares, which for reference are 200 meters by 200 meters. Each sector has a capture point, which you will be fighting over. You capture it by having more men than the opposing side within the four grid squares around the capture point. The circle is called a hard point. Each man standing in the hard point is worth more than each of the men standing outside of it, so it's preferable to be in the hard point, but not essential. In the warfare game mode, you'll fight over the central point until one team captures it. Once captured, you will have the chance to take the next point to advance even further into enemy territory while still defending the one you've just captured. Then it's tug of war until one team gets pushed right back or the timer runs out, which is one hour. The offensive mode is newer, but essentially the same, except the defending team starts by controlling all sectors and it's up to the attacking team to take them. To be honest, your number of kills really doesn't matter. The basic mechanics are straightforward, but how you actually spawn is not. You can respawn as many times as you like, but there are several different ways. First, you can spawn at the very back of the map. You'll want to hop into a troop transport to get to the front, and you'll likely only spawn here at the beginning of the game. Most of the time, you spawn on either a garrison or an outpost, both of which must be created by players and can be destroyed by your opponent. Let's start with garrisons. Any player on your team can spawn at a garrison, and there's a 60 second timer. You won't have to wait the full 60 seconds each time. If you get lucky, there will be a few seconds left until the next wave comes in. They can only be constructed by squad leaders and require a certain level of supplies. We'll talk about both of those in more detail in a minute. They must be placed at least 200 meters apart, and you can construct them behind enemy lines, but it costs more to do so. They also glow red on the map when enemies are near, so they can be tactfully placed as an early warning system. Garrisons and garrison placement are the lifeblood of every game. If you can take out enough of the other team's garrisons, you will effectively starve them of respawns, or at least to make them spawn further from the point you're fighting over. Now let's look at outposts. Again, they can only be placed by squad leaders, but they don't cost any supplies, and can be placed anywhere the squad leader likes. Better yet, their spawn timer is a far more attractive 20 seconds, but here's the thing. Only that squad of six can use it. The reality is you will use both garrisons and outposts regularly throughout the match, but the preference would be an outpost due to the shorter timer and free placement. You must be part of a squad to play the game. You cannot play on your own. 
most squads are six-man squads with a squad leader, with the other five fulfilling certain roles. For example, each squad can only have one machine gunner and one anti-tank soldier, but you can have as many riflemen as you like, which is a good basic class to get started with, as you have no particularly special role. There are also tank squads, which are three-man squads, which, you guessed it, man a tank, a driver, a gunner, and an officer who work together to make the thing work. Then finally, we have recon squads, which have two members, a sniper and a spotter. You will often find them behind enemy lines, taking out artillery. Oh yes, there's artillery. Right at the back of the map, you can man a big gun and create pure devastation. But it is a bit of a maths lesson to be able to hit anything, and communication is key. To communicate, you can hold C to talk to your squad, V to talk to those around you, and if you're a squad leader, there's X for a dedicated command chat. Oh yes, there's an overall big boy commander who has their own chat with all the squad leaders to coordinate the entire game. There's a functioning chain of command here, encouraged by the squad leader abilities and the setup of the chat, but ultimately because the players want to follow it. The commander needs to give out instructions, provide supplies, and call in off-map support, such as the devastating and truly fucking awesome bombing run. All of the maps in Hell Let Loose are based on real battles of World War II all across Europe. Real locations to scale using satellite imagery and aerial photography from the archives. Yeah, we have some serious accuracy here. We've got Utah Beach, we've got St. Mary Glees, we have Hurtgen Forest, we have St. Mary Dumont, and more. The level of detail in the maps is absolutely stunning, so if World War II accuracy and immersion are your thing, you are simply going to love Hell Let Loose. The weapons, the sound effects, the tanks, all oh, the tanks, planes flying overhead, ambient noises, and little town centres with coffee shops showing small signs of what life was like before it was blasted apart. It takes immersion to another level. If you're playing on console, all of this will look beautiful, but on PC it does require a certain amount of oomph. But as long as you're happy to play with medium to low graphics, you can play this on a lower end system, particularly as the game isn't as fast paced as other shooters, so a high frame rate isn't as important as other FPS titles. But boy, is it gorgeous when you can turn the graphics up. Although the game is highly rated, you will occasionally hear a scathing review. I believe that in part this is due to some confusion as to who the game is actually aimed at. I genuinely believe that only a limited number of FPS players will find the game is for them, and the key features of the game will actually appeal more to a strategy gamer. To help illustrate my point, let's dive into how the different resource systems work, which make the game look more like a real-time strategy than Call of Duty. Supplies are used to build garrisons for spawning, for engineers to construct defences around a base, such as barbed wire and bunkers, and for engineers to build nodes. There are three types of nodes, manpower, munitions and fuel, each of which produce three resources, you guessed it, manpower, munitions and fuel, which can be spent on a variety of things. Munitions provides shells for the artillery and devastating bombing runs from the sky. Fuel is so you can spawn vehicles, and manpower provides the commander with some special powers that can make it more difficult for the other team to capture a point, for example. But the root of all of this is supplies, which can be created in a few ways. There's a support soldier that can drop a little bit of supply on the ground in a box. The commander can parachute a big crate of supplies in, or someone can drive a supply truck from the edge of the map drop the supplies off wherever they like, and drive back again to get some more. But you have to spread the supplies out, as all of these structures need a certain level of supply within a certain radius to be able to build. So where you place the supplies is important for construction. Sorry to throw all of that at you, and that isn't even everything, but this is my whole point. It's a lot to take in, much more than your average FPS title, and the learning curve feels more like what you would find in a strategy game. Don't get me wrong, if you want to just be a running and shooting rifleman, you could ignore all of this, but you're missing out on 50% of the game that way. When you hear an FPS player say they tried Hell Let Loose and it was crap, I bet that 9 times out of 10, they weren't used to taking cover and dying from one bullet all the time, didn't like being forced into a squad, talking on the mic, or having to learn all of these confusing mechanics. Not everyone has the patience for it and they're not getting the instant gratification that Fortnite and Warzone provide. But a strategy gamer will tend to have the patience to learn the mechanics. 
take their time to get into a position in cover, and choose their shots. You don't need to be good at getting multiple headshots to be an effective player in Hell Let Loose, as one well-placed shot from cover is all that's required, but you need to work with your team, and sometimes do a supply truck run to keep your team advancing, or put up an effective defence. Teamwork will always overcome individual skill. Talking on a mic may be less of a natural fit for you, but once you realise 99% of the players are genuinely lovely people that are happy to teach you the game, I bet it will be difficult to shut you up on the mic after that. Two players working together, slowly moving down a hedgerow, taking their time to flank right round the enemy to establish a garrison behind enemy lines. Those patient and beautiful bastards are the ones that win matches in Hell Let Loose, and strategy gamers are the perfect candidates for such game-changing missions. Now you know what a game of Hell Let Loose is actually like, let's have a quick fire round to list off some of the good and bad parts of the game. The tutorial is bad, you will definitely need to research elsewhere to fully understand the mechanics. But there's absolutely no pay to win or loot boxes. The progression system is awesome. You level up each class over time to unlock cosmetics and the occasional weapons such as the famous MG42, which is absolutely worth it. At the end of each match, you can give a commendation to one player, which gives them additional XP, and the community make a habit of awarding this to the lowest ranked player in your squad. How nice. The community in general is very welcoming, of course you will find the occasional dick, but most people are there to have a good time and are happy to help if you're struggling. The suppression mechanic when you shoot near someone is particularly good as it's brutal. A machine gun can not only mow people down, it can be used to suppress them, which basically takes them out of the fight for a while, as it makes your screen go very dark and you can't really do anything. So how much is this game going to cost you at full price and in the sale? Since full release, the full price of the game is $40, £35 or €40. Euros. But in the sale, you can expect a 33% discount, bringing the price to $27, $23 pounds or €27. Euros. I wouldn't describe the game as cheap, and there are only two game modes with no campaign, so you are essentially doing the same thing over and over, but Hell Let Loose games are so big, with so many people and possibilities, no two matches are the same, and the roadmap is promising a bunch of free content just on the horizon, so the price can be described as fair for what you receive. The game does have paid for DLC content, but it's purely cosmetic. The outfits do look pretty good to be fair, but I suspect most people who have purchased the DLCs are doing so to support the developers or as a present for a loved one. So let's bring this all together and answer the question, is Hell Let Loose right for you today? You can't compare this game to Battlefield 5 or Call of Duty. Even though there are many similarities with Battlefield 5, there are many fundamental differences too. If you enjoy games set in World War II, if you have the patience to get over the learning curve and put up with randomly dying occasionally, if you enjoy teamwork, having a defined role within a squad, leading people as a squad leader or commander, Hell Let Loose will give you a satisfying experience and plenty more on top. If you enjoy sliding around the floor, stacking up headshots as a lone wolf, you won't last five minutes in Hell Let Loose. So what do you actually do in this game? You spawn, hopefully on an outpost that your squad leader has put down. You attack or defend the position your squad leader has chosen until you're told to move on. The whole time communicating and pinging where enemy tanks and infantry are, throwing the occasional grenade and laying down suppression fire. If you're attacking a point, you'll try to establish multiple offensive garrisons to spawn at and apply pressure to the defending team. Once you get close enough to destroy their garrisons, the point will be yours in no time. If you're defending... You can't just defend the hard point, you have to spread out and prevent the other team from flanking you and placing a bunch of attacking garrisons behind your position. You'll sweep the perimeter constantly and destroy any enemy garrisons you come across and intercept any enemy supplies being dropped behind your lines. As soon as a tank turns up, you'll need to run away screaming while trying to find an anti-tank gunner to take care of the job for you. And if there's a tank on your side, you may end up helping them spot enemies or generally guiding them through as their vision is limited. It's one of the best games I've ever played, so don't simply write it off as another shooter. It's so much more, and it might be the perfect game for you. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, I have plenty more like it, so feel free to check those out. See ya.